Aristotle says of it that it is a logos that does not utter a judgment over matters in their relation, and that it therefore cannot be true or false. This arche, it may also be said, is not the language of theory, but rather a genuinely practical, indeed proto-practical language, at the minimum of its existence. It is the language that claims something, for instance a right, that is not yet given. It is the language of a claim to a future that is not yet present and perhaps never will be. Devoid of all predicative content, devoid of the power to produce out of itself what is desired, the arche is present in every now of speech, the language of mere unqualified existence. Accordingly, the man of right to have rights would determine himself as the one who, as yet undetermined, merely raises the claim to determination, pleading for it, desiring it. It would only be its own logon echon as its own archen echon. What remains of political theory and political anthropotheology would be just the, the sheer existence of this language of the wish, of the plea, or even the prayer. The wish that wishes that there may be less and more than politics, wishing that it may be something other than politics, that there may be a society, and that this society may be that of the absolutely singular. And to this extent, the language of the Arche is the language of the male, of the Bulu Utsis, of the Augustinian definition of love that is quoted by Hannah Arendt. This language pronounces no judgment as to existence, also none about itself. As Arche, it is the plea or the prayer for existence, and even for its own existence. And it is therefore itself not a being, but rather only the relation to its possibility. It is the medium and the happening of the existence without predicate, as the happening of the possibility of such an existence. A plea that it may be a plea, and thus a plea without being, that is made to an receive without being, and only thus a right to have rights, a right to be and to be otherwise. Thank you. best way out here for me is always uh, to say, uh, I totally agree with everything you said. Please you know, do. The indication of a lazy mind. Uh, the, <laughs> the problem is that I really do, and that, in, in, uh, that I really thank you, and she can uh, be my witnesses that I never say something like that, thanking a speaker. It's the first time I really thank you that you uh, explicated in a totally different way but I try to uh, establish in my classes as a monadic design of homo generator, this responsibility of generating life before interpretation. Mm -hmm. and, and for what you, what you uh, gave in a way, I never uh, thought of it in this way, that the life, uh, the, the Lebenstechnik, mm -hmm. the life technique before theory and practice, which is at the core of my philosophy of technology, and as I get a life before you get a theory, mm -hmm. have this right before you go into any specifics of it, and actually it is exactly this, that you don't have to, to qualify it uh, before that, that is something with, uh, it gives this kind of, which is the Heidegger escapes structure here. Uh, which is also the structure of, of Ereignis and, yeah. and so on. Also, there is really uh, something when we are trying to go to this primary uh, uh, existence, Dasein form in it, in order to, to uh, break up all the, the uh, already fixed meanings of, of that, which they told us it's a given and it's the best way you can f uh, formulate or determine how humanity is. And in fact, even if it's the best way we can imagine nowadays, it means only it's just what we can think now, and that is never really what uh, is possible for humanity. Humanity is, and I agree with you and Marx and, <laughs> and others, it's an unfinished project in any way, you know, and will always be, uh, hopefully. So, 
Yes, you, you did something there, I think, which uh, was also very brave because this human rights issue is such an ideological uh, loaded oh, issue and everybody who seems to attack it or whatever, even take away the basis they were so proud of, you know, is considered an enemy of it. But certainly you made clear that in no way you want that uh, we are allowed now to kill, so just the opposite. Mm. Whatever it is, it will not be. So the right to smoke is also not included in this two <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but again, well, that is, and now I'm really kind of uh, out of verse in this praise. So I have to fight and say, okay, what would I say against it? What are you against? Against me. There's a voice against it. Myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. Uh, I know my voices here. Yeah. Um, wait, wait for the other voices. Let me try. The emptiness. Yeah. The emptiness in which, and also the, uh, the question what is about the rights to all wrongs, not only to all rights, you know, the rights to, to, to measure that comes out of, of the emptiness, obviously. What attracts us to claim rights which is not uh, there? Is there, right? because it's obviously not just what we do, or what we are able to do, something must call us to have, uh, to consider uh, something uh, like it. And if it does, if there's a process going on, this process is always under the possibility of going totally wrong. Okay. So there could be that we, with this structure, uh, structure of having rights, uh, right to rights, right? we can have the rights to become Mafiosis, right? there's this always this uh, famous example of a society, as I think, of Godfather, right? which in itself functioned very well, which gave it their own rights, their, their own um, yeah, integrity, and, and all this uh, stuff. Would, would, from outside, they were accused of being murderers, but from inside, they were honorable people because they followed the codes, the rights they have invented. So here is a, a question. I'm not sure it's a question which we don't answer in, in, in this respect, but we have to consider mm -hmm. that this abstractness, this emptiness, uh, also is an open uh, for, uh, yeah, for any kind of, of things. And so I think, um, what was uh, the, Kantian, um, um, the Kantian word for that uh, threat? Uh, when he said, also that's all Diese, diese Glaubens, diese Verrücktheiten, nicht? können in so einer äh, Struktur einbrechen. Die Bibel, ich sage, I have seen God, God told me to have this kind of, uh, of rights. And I am this in my rights to have, to uh, invent, to generate rights. Nicht? And why not saying, God told me? And told me to put you in prison because you are such an uh, unbeliever. Ja, asking Osama, he has also his right to rights. Uh, Executed, and they are not saying you are the one <laughs> you should be included here. Also, mm -hmm. that would be kind of my uneasiness towards my own uh, approach in, in that would go this way. This is actually my uh, commentary and kind of if, a, if there is a question uh, in there you like to address, please, before I go to open it up to the rest of the <coughs> The right and wrong. The right or wrong rights. No, my, 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 my whole point is uh, on the, the movement that I'm suggesting um, um, to um, observe um, um, the movement that is taken, that is made by Hannah Arendt. Uh, is uh, to take a step back from the existing positive or natural life and focus our attention on the right to have rights and try to describe the particular structure of this singular right 